Hey there, I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and in this video, I actually wanted to talk about how I got my first job as a self-taught software developer, because a lot of people out there are really concerned. They're like, they're going on their own path and trying to figure out how to become a software developer, and they're like, I have no idea how to actually overcome that first barrier, which is getting your first job. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about it, but before I do, I highly recommend subscribe to my channel, uh, on my channel, I cover everything software development related from a perspective of somebody who's going the self-taught route. So if you're trying to teach yourself, if, if you're not going to school, if you're not taking a boot camp or anything like that, if you're going fully solo, uh, this channel, I'm trying to provide as much value and resources as I can so that anyone anywhere can become a software developer. So let's just dive into it. So back in 2015, this was back in either February or March of 2015, I actually got my first job as a software developer. and. I got a job at a very small company called ReachMail. It was a company that sends emails, sort of like a MailChimp, SendGrid. Um, my mind's blanking here. There's a couple other ones, but essentially that was my first job. It was a very, it was a much smaller company, much smaller dev team. But let's talk about how I got there. So if you haven't seen my story before, I highly recommend watching it. There's this, there's a, my, one of my first YouTube videos I made was about my story that took me about a year to go from an actual car salesman, literally to a software developer. But the one I really want to focus on is that last stretch. So uh, I had been coding for about seven or eight months, building my portfolio out, learning JavaScript, C Sharp, even some database stuff. I knew a little bit of, of a few different things besides JavaScript and C Sharp, but those were my two main focuses. But I had a portfolio and right at about December, so it was like around Christmas time, I just made the decision. Um, I said, look, uh, you know, I, I wanted to make it about a year is when I really wanted to start applying for jobs. Whether I was ready or not, it didn't really matter. I just knew that after I've been doing this for about a year, I should have made some progress where I can at least get some feedback from the job market, right? So I really didn't have a good sense that my skills were up to par. I asked a friend who was mentoring me at the time. I said, do you think I'm ready? We did a few, like a, a mock interview. We did some coding or, or whiteboarding challenges. And he gave me the stamp of approval where he's like, you are 100% ready to go. So I just, I trusted him. I also trusted in the fact that like, look, if I was going to get a lot of negative feedback when I went out in the job market, then at least I can take that negative feedback and apply it back to learning. And so that was basically my approach was, Go out, apply for jobs. If it didn't work, go back to the drawing board and then try again and, and make things work, like learn what I had to learn to move forward, right? So in December, I decided that. Well, I can't tell you the exact amount of time. Maybe it was like a month, a month and a half, but I, I spent the next month, month and a half creating a resume, creating my or refining my portfolio, which is really what I mean is my personal website that had my portfolio on it. And... In that time, I applied to roughly 30 to 40 jobs, somewhere in that range. I kept a spreadsheet. I think it ended up being 34 jobs. <laughs> but I've applied to 34 different places, just pretty much using your standard routes to apply for jobs. So I went to monster.com, Indeed, main job boards, LinkedIn, something like that. And that was my approach. And then guess what? With that approach, I basically had no responses. Well, I got responses, but all the responses back were were sorry, we're not interested. I think I got about six or seven no responses, meaning they said no, but the, the rest either just didn't respond or whatever. So after about a month and a half of doing that old, you know, tired strategy and approach, my, I reached back out to my mentor. I said, I'm not getting any luck with even getting through the door. Like what's going on? And so he took a look at my resume. He's like, this resume is shit. <laughs> you know, he's like, you need to switch it up a little bit. So, and actually I have another video on that, which I highly recommend is I'll actually show you the resume that I used to get my first job. So click on that above here. But, uh, you know, he took my resume in part and said like, look, you know, get rid of this, get rid of that. Like, for example, I, um, you know, obviously didn't have any education on there. He said to put on some education. He said to take away your prior experiences that weren't related to software development and just add in your portfolio applications. He said to make it look a little bit more interesting and creative so that it stood out from the masses of just normal resumes. And so I said, okay, cool. I'll try it. I made that my version two resume. And so uh, I put that out there and it hit like that. It was so fast. I, I think it was a couple days. I just want to make sure I'm not exaggerating here. I'm pretty sure it was a couple days from when I put it out. I think I applied to maybe just a few jobs at that point. And as I put it out, I got a call back. And I got a call back actually from a recruiter. So not an actual company, but a, like an independent recruiter who was looking to place people at, at random companies. And the recruiter basically said, she's like, I really thought your resume was interesting. She said, why don't you come in and talk and see, I might have a company that's interested in you. I said, okay, cool. This is awesome. It's great. 
And so I showed up and of course there, she's asked me a bunch of questions like, do I know this? Do I know that? And me, I'm trying to be as honest as I can. I'm like, well, yeah, I know JavaScript, but I don't know how much I know it. You know, like I feel pretty comfortable in it. She asked me about C sharp. I said the same thing. I, I remember they specifically asked about SQL, which for me, SQL was not good. It was just like, I just watched tutorials. and I did a few things with it. But by the end of it, she's like, look, I, you seem to have a nice personality. I'm working with a smaller company that it might be interested in you. Let me relay to them what your situation is and we'll go from there. So from there, I waited a few days. She reached back. She said they're interested, went through the interview, went to the interview and the interview process was, you know, I was as nervous as anyone could be because I've been working a year up to this point. I had put in my two weeks already at my prior job uh, because they were, it was a growing company. It was, it was a small company, but it was growing and they needed to know whether I was going to stay there for longer or not. So I just decided like to leave, which is kind of nerve wracking because I was not going to have a job. So I, I went to the interview and I talked to this, essentially the CEO of the company and the CTO of the company in the same room. And they're pretty laid back, but the CEO uh, was very, you know, straight faced. Well, the CTO was actually a little bit more like open and nicer and friendly, but we just talked about a lot of stuff. They asked me a lot of questions about what I was doing. How did I, how was I learning? What was I learning? Did I know how to do X, Y, or Z, which at this point, I don't remember exactly what they asked me. I do remember they asked me about SQL because I didn't, I, I remember not going into the interview. I was like, how am I going to answer this? And I basically told them, I was honest. I said, look, you know, I don't really know SQL that well. I have uh, watched a few tutorials on it. I played around with it a little bit, but it's something I wanted to do more of, and it's something I wanted to do more of in the, in the near future. Um, I would say that the interview, uh, what I really stressed is just, I tried to always stress that, like, look, I'm going to work my ass off. Like, no matter what I do, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to figure things out. Like, that's my mentality with programming. And I said, you know, if you guys help me along, uh, awesome. If not, I'll still, you know, work my butt off to figure things out, and, you know, I, I won't disappoint you, like that sort of thing. So... After that, we went through the process of the interview and they said, okay, look, uh, the next step of the process is to do a little bit of homework for the, to see what you can do. So they gave me homework and it was basically having, uh, I had to interact with their API. So I had to go in and uh, start an email campaign and send the email campaign to them using their API, their public or open API. So, uh, okay, I figured that's cool. I'll go home, go ahead and go home and do that. Well, I got home and did that and I, I carved out the next two days to figure out how to do this, right? Because I was like, shit, this is really important. So I sat there for like the first couple hours. I had no idea what I was doing. I had actually never really truly worked with a public API. I had worked with a the Google Maps library, which is not really an API. I mean, it's not an API. It's just a, it's a library. So I had worked with an SDK before, a library, but I had never worked with a public API like Twitter or Facebook or something where you can interact with them using your, you know, your own code sending HTTP requests. So this was new to me. And so I was learning on the fly and I figured, look, I have like a day and they said, it even said you could ask questions, which was very interesting, but I plugged through it. I started to figure things out very quickly and I was playing around and then I, I sent it in and it was working. And once they saw it, I think we had... I don't think we had any more follow-up discussions. The recruiter reached back out to me after that. I sent in my homework and said, I think you know this is going to go well. I think they're going to make an offer for you, but just sit tight. And then I eventually got the email from them with the offer saying that, look, we we're excited to have you on board. But also at the same time, they said, look, there's like a three-month interim period where we're, you know, we can basically let you go for any reason, like legally, because we we want to see how you're going to do. Maybe you, you, you're you awesome and you, you just... You, do very well, or you know, it's like either you sink or you swim, basically. So at that point, I was like, awesome, great. They made the offer. I, I accepted it. The pay was much better than anything I had ever had before, so it was good. So yeah, that's really my story of how I got hired for my first job. As you can see, it took me a little bit of time. It took me a lot of no's, like a lot of no responses. It took me uh, playing around a little bit, like testing the waters. Uh, I had to have a second version of my resume, which by the way, you should have many versions of your resume. I've heard of people having like 20, 30, or 40 versions of their resume, which I highly endorse. I think that's a great idea because you should be A-B split testing your resume, trying to figure out which version of your resume tends to get more hits and then go from there. Cause there's a lot of different reasons why people aren't seeing your resumes. So being open to experimentation 
And at the end of the day, just be persistent and always be willing to go back to the drawing board and figure out what you need to know, what you need to learn, whether it's, you know, some data structures, algorithms, whiteboarding challenges, maybe it's just practice for your interviews and go from there. So I hope this video was helpful. Go ahead and hit the like button below and subscribe. Other than that, I have a free Facebook group that I highly recommend joining right now. Go to andysterkwitz.com forward slash group. I focus that on only high quality content. Make sure there's a high signal to noise ratio in there for people who are looking to become software developers. So other than that, that's really all I have today. Thank you so much, guys, and peace out.